welcome to Fayette County Public Library story time. We're going to start today with the story poem in your pocket. See all those pockets with all those poems in there. Mm -hmm. Mr. Tipton's class had never had an author visit them before. Emmy Crane is a poet, said Mr. Tiffin. And she doesn't know it, said Robert. That rhymes. Not all poems rhyme, said Eleanor. Mr. Crane, or not Mr. Crane, Miss Crane is coming to visit for Poem in Your Pocket Day, said Mr. Tiffin. We're going to write poems of our own and put them in our pockets. I'm going to wear my jeans with six pockets that day, Eleanor whispered to Molly. I'm going to have a different poem in each one. I'm sure your poems will be perfect, Molly whispered back. Eleanor thought it would be too show-offy to agree, so she didn't say a word, but inside she nodded. Eleanor got to work. All during March, she studied poetry. All during April, the class caught up with Eleanor. They read poetry books and learned poems by heart and wrote poems in their poetry journals. Every day there was something new to learn. Mr. Tiffin taught them about similes and they tried them out. Robert is as tall as that really high building in the middle of town, said Robert. Math is like a knot, said Tara. One that we can untangle together, said Mr. Tiffin. So a simile compares two different things using the word like or as. So some poems do that. They worked on metaphors. A metaphor is a comparison saying one thing is another thing. Recess is an ice cream cone on a hot day, said Alex, even in April. Homework is a belt that's too tight, said Jake. Do you have a metaphor, Eleanor, asked Mr. Tiffin. I'm coming up with something amazing, said Eleanor. I'm just not ready to say anything. Eleanor is a library, said Tara, filled with silence. The class read short poems. These are called haiku, said Eleanor. Little poems can say a lot, said Charlie. They read puzzle poems. These are called acrostics, said Eleanor. They're fun to figure out, said Jeremy. They read poems that looked like the pictures. These are called concrete poems, said Eleanor. A concrete pumpkin seed, said Kimmy. And they read a whole lot of funny poems. Hey! Who knew poems could make you laugh, said Jake. I don't know the name for these, said Eleanor. Whew, said Molly. So there are lots of different kinds of poems. One bright morning, Mr. Tiffin took the class outside. What do you see, he asked. Use your poet's eyes. Everyone looked around. Buds are like tiny red firecrackers, said Charlie, waiting to explode into flowers. Sadness is a cracked sidewalk, said Tara. Very nice, said Mr. Tiffin. Miss Crane will be so impressed. He noticed that Eleanor was being very quiet. How about you, Eleanor? What does your poet's eye see? Eleanor wanted Miss Crane to be impressed with her, too. I'm still thinking, she said. One Friday afternoon, Mr. Tiffin brought everyone in class a small brown bag with a surprise inside. Sneak a peek inside your bags and then write a poem about what's in there. But don't tell anyone what you're writing about, he said. We'll do our best to guess. That sounds like fun. The class took out their poetry journals and got to work. Then they read their poems out loud. Alex guessed that Jake had a pebble in his bag, and she was right. Kimmy guessed that Molly had a glass animal, and she was right. She could even tell it was a horse. 
No one could guess what Eleanor had in her brown bag. Her journal page was clean and blank. This shell is too perfect to write about, she said. Try again at home tonight, said Mr. Tiffin, and remember, poetry is a messy business. On Saturday night, Eleanor tried to finish her brown bag poem. She wrote seven drafts, and she only liked one. When she woke up in the morning, she read the poem she'd liked. This stinks, she said. On Sunday night, Eleanor wrote six haiku with a total of three metaphors and two similes. She smiled as she went to bed. In the morning, she looked them over. This is not poetry, she said. By Monday night, Eleanor was worried. She wrote 11 rhyming poems. The next morning, she threw them off her desk. Today is poem in your pocket day, she said, and I don't have anything that's good enough. Eleanor's eyes stung as she got ready for school. She wore a dress with just one small pocket with nothing inside it. The day was as gray as Eleanor's mood. Having a hard time, isn't she? Mm -hmm. she, li she likes them, and then the next day she hates them. Yeah. The whole school was decorated for Poem in Your Pocket Day. There were pockets on the doors and poems in those pockets. There were pockets on the lockers and poems stuffed in those. There were rolled up poems and stapled poems. There was a poem written in chalk on the sidewalk, but that one had run in the rain. All the students had poems in their pockets. All except one. Who's the one person with no poem? What's her name? Eleanor. Eleanor. <laughs> Eleanor worked on her poem at recess. She worked on her poem in the girls' room. She even worked on her poem during science. But the more she worked, the harder it was to think. At the end of the day, the students gathered in the gym for the poetry assembly. Mr. Tiffin told the school that Emmy Crane was a great American poet. He led her to the stage, and she sat down in the author's chair. She looks like a queen, said Molly. She looks perfect, said Eleanor. Emmy Crane read some of her poems aloud. She told the students what it was like to be a writer and answered their questions. Do you make a lot of money, asked Robert. Just enough, said Emmy Crane. Where do you get your ideas, asked Charlie. From everything I think and everything I feel, said Emmy Crane. At last it was time for Mr. Tiffin's class to read their poems. Eleanor could hardly breathe as her classmates went up onto the stage and pulled their poems out of their pockets. Charlie recited his poem. Emmy Crane grinned. Robert shouted his poem. Emmy Crane winked. Tara whispered her poem. Emmy Crane nodded. Finally, it was Eleanor's turn. She looked at Mr. Tiffin. Would you rather not read your poem, he asked. Eleanor could not even speak. I wanted my poem to be perfect, she said to Mr. Tiffin but I have nothing in my pocket, nothing at all. You don't have to go up there, said Mr. Tiffin. I can't disappoint Emmy Crane, said Eleanor. So Eleanor walked slowly up onto the stage. What do you think she'll do? She looked out at all the students and all the teachers and at Emmy Crane herself. My name is Eleanor, she said in a tiny voice, and I don't have a poem in my pocket. I tried and tried, but I couldn't get it right. Come over here, Eleanor, Emmy Crane smiled, a small smile as Eleanor walked closer. No poem is perfect, she said in a voice only Eleanor could hear. I thought of so many things, Eleanor told Emmy Crane, but they're all in my head. Tell me what you've been thinking about, Eleanor, said Emmy Crane. Eleanor closed her eyes and thought about the poems she wanted to write. 
I have a poem, she said, in the pocket of my mind. She remembered the poetry book she had studied at the library. It is neat and perfect there. She used her poet's eye. As delicate as a shell and as sturdy, she thought about the treasure in her brown bag. It has mysteries hidden inside it. Then she thought about her blank journal page. But when I try to write it down, the words disappear. She pictured the poem on the sidewalk that morning, like chalk on the sidewalk in the rain. Then she opened her eyes. It sounded pretty good to me. At last, Emmy Crane spoke. That's a poem itself, she said. Those are words from the heart, and words from the heart are where poetry begins. Eleanor stepped down from the stage. The assembly was over. Everyone clapped and cheered for Emmy Crane. Eleanor was feeling too much to cheer, so she cheered inside as loud as she could. She looks happy now, doesn't she? Her gray, t her gray day turned into a sunshine day. So this is Eleanor's poetry page. Poetry doesn't have to rhyme. Poems can come to you anytime. Follow your ideas wherever they may wind and keep a poem in the pocket of your mind. Yes. Um, uh, she just rhymed. Um, I was trying to say she just rhymed on the last page on that one. Uh -huh. Her face looks like an emoji face. Oh, <laughs> really? <laughs> That's a big smile, isn't it? She was happy then at the end. Okay, Miss Lisa, it's your turn. All right, Miss Kim just read us a story about all these kids that have poems in their pockets. We have ten pockets up here on our flannel board, and each of them have a surprise inside. And their pockets I'm going to read like... you a little riddle, and I'll see if you can figure out what's inside. Pocket number one. See if you can think. This is what it says. I have a little pocket where many things can hide. It opens doors and starts the car. Do you know what's Jeez. inside? Jeez. All right, links come up up here and open up. Take the pocket off and pull out what's inside. See if you are right. All right, put that up here on the board. Well, it will stick. All right, there is a key. You, can, you can't be wrong when it says you open the door and it starts the car. You can't be wrong if you say it. Okay, right. number two. I have a little pocket where many things can hide. It's used to draw in a coloring book. What is inside? Yeah. Okay, come and look here. Let's see if you are right. Is it a crayon? And yep. it's a red crayon. Very good. One of my favorite colors. Number three, I have a little pocket where many things can hide. It lights your way when it is dark. Clayton, do you know what's inside? Flash light. Flash light. Clayton, come and look. Clayton, look. Alexander, you'll be next. All right, let's see what's inside. It, right there. Yep. What could be inside? I think they like riddles. Mm-hmm. Riddles are fun. Can you find it? You are right. All right. Alexander, this will be for you. Ready? I have a little pocket where many things can hide. It shows you when it is time for bed. Do you know what's inside? Um, what tells you when it's time for bed? A clock. Oh, do you think so? Open up the pocket and see what's inside. I hope it's a pattern or just something. Pull out the picture. <gasps> you are right. Yeah. All right, yeah. links number five. I have a little pocket where many things can hide. It keeps your hands warm in the cold. Do you know what could be inside? Gloves. Okay, let's see. What's another word for gloves? Mittens. Gloves or mittens. mittens. Let's see what it is. It's probably clock. There it is. Those gloves. wonderful it's mittens. Gloves. All right, Zane, number six. I have a little pocket where many things can hide. It lives near a pond and it jumps. Do you know what's inside? When it said it lives at the pond, I was like, Duck, but right. then it said it in jumps. Jumps. Like, it's gotta be a frog. Let's see if you're right. I think. 
it's a frog, frog or a toad. Oh, well, if it plays at the pond. If it lives in the pond, <laughs> right, then we have a pocket. If it lives in the pond. Oh, has to be a frog. Good job. All right, Clayton, number seven. I have a little pocket where many things could hide. It's long and green and scares the girls. Do you know what's inside? A turtle. A turtle's going to scare the girls? It's long. Long and green, and it scares mm. girls. What's long? Boys aren't afraid of this, but girls are. What is it? Rattlesnake. <gasps> it's a snake. It's a snake. Girls are scared of them, aren't they? All right, Alexander, number eight is for you. I have a little pocket where many things can hide. This has teeth, and it makes your hair neat. Do you know what's inside? A comb. Come see. Let's see if you're right. <laughs> okay. I have a comb or something. And then we have two more. Well, I hope Pull it's... it out. Oh, it oh, is a comb. Oh. It makes your hair nice and neat. Oh. All right, maybe we'll stick it this way. All right, Lynx, you get number nine. I have a little pocket where many things can hide. It's red and good to eat. Do you know what's inside? A tomato. Well, what else is red and is good to eat? Let's see if you're right. Oh, there's lots of red yummy things, isn't there? It's what an one apple. is it? I, I, I thought that in the first place. Good job. All right, Zane, you get number 10. I have a little pocket where many things can hide. It helps you check out books. Do you know what's inside? If you're at the library, come check and see. Code. What do you need to check out books? Library code. I think Clayton knows. Why don't you come look here, Zane? Open the pocket. I know. See if see if Clayton's right. Some, something you use at the library. What could it be? Oh, a card. A library card. Awesome. So riddles are a fun way to learn and guess things, isn't it? Yeah. That I have. Yes, I bet each of you should have one. Huh? I just want to read that. Yep. All right, well, we don't have time for that right now. you got your own. You can read it later. This is our next book, and it is called Katie, No Pocket. So, so far, we've heard about a poem in a pocket. Uh -huh. We had all these things in a pocket, but Katie doesn't have a pocket. I don't know which. Well, ca kangaroos are supposed to have pockets, right? But this says, Katie, no pocket. Well, Katie's a girl, though, right? Big tears rolled down Katie Kangaroo's brown face. Poor Katie was crying because she didn't have a pocket like all the other mommy kangaroos. Freddie was Kang Katie Kangaroo's little boy, and he needed a pocket to ride in. All the grown-up kangaroos take awfully big hops, and little kangaroos like Freddie get left behind unless their mommies have a pocket for them to ride in. But poor Katie didn't have a pocket. Katie Kangaroo cried just thinking about it, and Freddie cried too. Then all of a sudden, Katie had a wonderful idea. It was so wonderful, she jumped up six feet in the air. The idea was this. All the other animal mommies and their children, they didn't have pockets, and so she would go ask one of them how they carry their babies around. Freddie looked around to see whom she could ask first, and what they both saw was bubbles rising from the river. Mrs. Crocodile, said Katie, feeling better already. She doesn't have a pocket. Let's go ask her. A lot of big muddy bubbles came up through the water, and then Mrs. Crocodile stuck her head up and opened her enormous mouth and smiled. Why, hello, Katie Kangaroo. What can I do for you today? Please, Mrs. Crocodile, I am so sad. I have no pocket for Freddy, and if he goes with me, he walks so much and he gets tired. Oh, dear, oh, dear. So she started to cry again. The crocodile began to cry, too, and she said, but how can I help you? How do you carry? Tell me how you carry Freddy, said Katie. How do you carry your little Catherine? Oh, do please tell me. Why, well, I carry her on my back, of course. She was so surprised that anyone shouldn't know that, that she forgot to cry any more. So crocodiles carry their babies on their back. Is that a good idea for kangaroos? No, they don't, they don't actually do that. 
Because uh, crocodiles actually... Put them in. They put them in their mouth? Uh, well, yes, yes. kangaroo shouldn't when, do that either, though, they, should they? When they hatch, <laughs> then they put... Then All right, well, let's just keep reading the story. Katie was pleased, and she said thank you. And so as soon as she did, she got down in a squatting down place, and she squatted down. She said, okay, Freddie, now get on my back. This will be simple, no trouble at all. But it wasn't simple. In the first place, Freddie could not crawl up on her back because his knees stuck out. He couldn't hang on because his front legs were too short. And when he did manage to hang on for a few minutes, and Katie gave a big, long hop, he fell off, bang and bump, with a terrific thump. And so Katie saw that she couldn't carry her baby on her back. So Katie and Freddie sat down again and thought and thought. I know, she said. I'll go ask Mrs. Monkey. I am sure she can help me. So Katie and Freddie set off for the forest, and soon they found Mrs. Monkey. She had her young son, Jocko, with her, and Katie hurried up to catch up with them so that she was almost out of breath. But finally, she managed to squeak out. Please, Mrs. Monkey, how do you carry Jocko around? Why, in my arms, of course, said Mrs. Monkey. How else would any sensible animal carry anything? And she whisked away through the trees. Oh, dear, said Katie, with a great big tear that ran down her nose. I can't carry anything in my short little arms. Oh, dear me. She wasn't any help at all. What are we going to do? She just sat down and cried and cried and cried and cried. Poor Freddy. He hated to see his mama cry, and so he put his paw to his head, and he thought, and he thought, and he thought, and he thought. What about the lions? He asked when Katie stopped crying a little bit. They don't carry their children. Those poor things walk just the way you do, said Katie. Well, there's the birds, said Freddy. How do birds carry their babies? Birds, said Katie, their mother pushes them out of their nest, and they squawk, and they squeak, and they flap their wings all about. Then, all at once, Katie had stopped crying, and she looked over at Freddy. They do say that the owl knows almost everything. Well, then, for goodness sakes, let's go ask him, said Freddy. But they found the owl asleep in the old dead tree. And he was very cross because he didn't want to be woken up in the middle of the day. Then he saw that Katie was very sad, and so he came out ruffling his feathers and said in a scratchy voice, Well, well, what is it? Speak up. I'm as deaf as a post. And so Katie stood under the tree and screamed at him, I'm a mother kangaroo, and I don't have a pocket to carry my child in. How shall I carry him? What should I do? Well, go get yourself a pocket, said the owl. What? Where? cried Katie. Oh, please don't go back to sleep to tell me where I can get one. How should I know, said the owl. They sell those kind of things, though, in the city, I believe. Now kindly just go away and let me go to sleep. The city, said Katie. She looked over at Freddie with a big round eyes. Of course, we'll go to the city. Katie was so excited that she almost left Freddie behind as she went leaping over the bushes and hopping along the path, singing in a sort of funny little way. Hippity hoppity, flippity floppity, isn't it pity? I didn't know I should go to the city, but here I go. She hopped as fast, so fast that Freddie could hardly keep up. But at last they left the woods and they came to the city. Are they going to find a pocket in the city? Well, there were stores and houses and automobiles everywhere. All the people stared and stared at Katie, but she didn't notice. She was looking for pockets, and she saw that almost everybody had one. And then all at once she saw, and she could hardly believe it, a man who seemed to be all pockets. He was simply covered with them, big pockets, little pockets, medium-sized pockets. Katie went up to him and laid a paw on his arms. He was a little frightened, but Katie looked at him with soft brown eyes and said, Please, dear kind man, where did you get all your pockets? My pockets, he said. You want to know where I got these pockets? Why, they just came with this apron, of course. You mean you can really get something to put all those pockets on already, said Katie? Sure, said the man. I'll keep my hammer and my nails and my tools in my pockets. But I could get another apron, so I'll just give you mine. He took off the apron and dumped it upside down. Out fell a saw and a wrench and nails and a hammer and a drill and lots of other tools. Then the man shook the apron hard and turned it back upside right again and hung it around Katie's neck and tied it behind her back. 
Katie was so pleased and excited and happy that she couldn't speak. She just stood still and looked down at all the pockets and smiled and smiled and smiled. And by this time, a big crowd had gathered to see what Katie Kangaroo was doing. Then she saw how pleased she was, and they all smiled back at her, too. <laughs> at last, Katie was able to say thank you to the nice, kind man. And then what do you think she did? She popped Freddy into the comfortable pocket, and she hippity-hop home as fast as she could. Of course, this time, she didn't have to wait for Freddy. And when she got home, what do you think she did? Well, she had so many pockets that she put Freddy into the biggest one of all, and then she put the next largest she put in little Leonard Lion. Thomas the tortoise just fit into another pocket. Sometimes she had the baby bird if its mother was busy out on a worm hunt, and there was still room for a monkey and a skunk and a rabbit and a raccoon and a lizard and a squirrel and a possum and a turtle and a frog and a snail. And so now all the animals like Katie's pockets better than any other pockets in the whole forest. And Katie Kangaroo is happy because now she has more pockets than any kangaroo in the whole wide world. Yeah. Look at all of them. Look at all of them. <laughs> she has lots of pockets. Yep, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. You are right. 14 pockets. Awesome story. That's a bunch of pockets. A bunch, a bunch of pockets. Well, the last story we had today is Carrot in My Pocket. You didn't know there were so many pocket stories, did you? No. No, 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 no. Well, what kind of a picture do you see here? What, where are we? We're at a farm. And um, who do you suppose has a carrot in his pocket? The boy. The boy. See it right there? Well, he runs into a problem in this story. We're not going to read the whole story because we're going to run out of time, okay? But I'm just going to tell you, this carrot disappears. I think an animal ate it. Do you have any idea where it might have gone? In a, in a, in a rabbit. In, 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 an animal. Animal. in an animal. Alexander says a rabbit, rabbit might have got it. I'm in thinking... The belly of an animal. I think any animal on the farm that could eat, like carrots, would probably snatch it from, from Any the one of them could be the suspect that yeah. took the carrot. Yeah, except for the dog it's, and the cat. It is it. in the belly of an animal. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just thought I'd tease you with this book. You see, we have this book at the library. And if you really want to know who took the carrot, you'll have I to know. come and check it out at the library. Oh, I see. <laughs> so we're gonna tease. Oh no, probably not, because we'll probably have a different theme next month. So you're gonna have to come and get. The, yep, come check it out. Come get the book at the library, and maybe those watching us on TV would like to know where the carrot went. Well, you know, we have the book at the library, so you'll have to come down and see us sometime and check it out. Um, you'll like the story. It's a it's a good story. Um, so that's all we have for today. I think we should say goodbye, boys. Goodbye. Goodbye. goodbye.